Welcome to the Company of One podcast. This is Dale Callahan, your host, and today we're talking about who is living your dream. So in all the things that we do and all the things, all the people that I coach, I mean, uh, the big thing that keeps coming up over and over is so many of us are lost in the sense that we want something more. What I'm hearing over and over again is I want something more. So the, the, the tagline that we have begin using is uh, on the surface, not a tagline, but the, the concept we've been using is on the surface, people feel like they're doing well, they're making good money, and looking at them at a distance, they look great. But when you talk to them, the words, I want more, are coming out of their mouth. I am actually hearing people, and as I talk to clients or potential clients, I'm listening for them and what they are saying in the words I are showing up all the time. There's there's this sense of they're just longing for something else. I want um, I want more. I want I feel like there is that I'm kind of left with about half my brain tied behind my back. Uh, there's um, all my skills and energy aren't being used. So when they get in this situation, though, what are they to do? And I made the last week's podcast, we were talking about how do you find your path after 30, and meaning 30 years old, because one of our clients quoted to us the fact that she felt like in high school people told you what to do, and you kind of had a path, and you said it's a high school counselor, and then in college you got out there and you had some counselors or some path. And then you get into the job, and initially you have some direction, but after that, you don't. So whether it's 20 or 30 or 40 or whoever, there's not a lot of people guiding us. Weird to me. In the country that we live in, at least most of you that are listening are probably in the United States. I know we have a lot of people listening to Africa, so a shout out to those of you in Africa uh, that I'm constantly talking to, and thanks for listening industrialized nations that are kind of a little bit ahead. Some of you are in countries that are up and coming. In most of our uh, industrialized countries, whatever you want to call that, uh, there's just so many opportunities, so many opportunities to do so many things. And we find ourselves, though, kind of stuck in a rut. And we don't really know what to do and how to do it and how to get out. We go through this exercise in the graduate program. Talk about how you find your calling. So I'll put that on this on, on the uh, it'll be on the show notes at delcallahan.com slash 164. Uh, we'll put a link to that. But it's an exercise just to explore what do you love doing. That's not what I'm really diving into today. I'm diving into the second part. Well, let me walk you through the exercise so you know where we're heading. So what is the things that what are the things that you love to do? What are the things that you're passionate about? What are the things other people as they ask for your advice on? Uh, so as you start exploring those what are they? And we can actually do a written, well, there it is, a written list, you know, where we, we have people write it down and just start thinking through things. And we just scratch through stuff, right? We say, oh, I can't do something I'm, I'm really good at, or I'm, that's so unreachable to me. But no, this is a brainstorming exercise. Rule one of a brainstorming exercise is everything stays on the list. But we go through and we explore it, and people end up with 20, 30, 40, or 50 different crazy things that they might think are kind of cool, you know, such as, you know, I'm going to become an underwater basket weaver. Bizarre sounding, right? But probably somebody's out there doing it. But you're thinking about all the possible that I've come up with. And then they start to narrow down that list. So we fought, call this a calling exercise. What do you love to do? Uh, then narrow down that list and then find people who are doing it. So in a couple of episodes again, we and we started asking the question, have you forgotten how to dream? This is a really important thing here because so much of our workforce in the United States, and I would dare to venture in all the industrialized countries of the world, have become lazy. 
we're, we're not dreaming. We're not thinking about ideas. We're just kind of sitting there, you know, like the frog in boiling water. We're just showing up and doing the bare minimum. That's right. Yeah, you're probably just sitting up, sh sitting there, showing up, doing the bare minimum just to get by uh, because you can, right? Because we're not struggling. Uh, we're not struggling in this society to feed ourselves. It's relatively easy to feed yourself. That's not always the case, right? But there are some. There are some who are driven. There are some who are passionate and some who are the dreamers. But even if you don't want to what kind of dreams can you come up with? How can you connect the things that you doing with money? How can you make that happen? So we talked about that and have you forgotten how to dream and even some symptoms that maybe there's some things going on with you and your mind and your body that are indicators that you've kind of forgotten how to dream. Sometimes they show up in physical elements. We talked about that last time in uh, psychosomatic type symptoms. But today we want to deal with just that last part. How do you find out who is living your dream? And that's the way I always word it because I want to think about where do I go and who's already doing it? Who is already making money? We have this sense a lot of times. I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs and especially kind of inventors being hanging around engineers. We have this sense that invented an idea or I've come up with something so crazy nobody's done it before. That's probably not true. Maybe nobody's done it exactly the way you've done it. You know, we're doing a podcast. Uh, maybe nobody's done a podcast on that topic, which is becoming more and more unlikely, even that. But we, we live in our own little bubble, blinders on, and we don't really realize that somebody done it. Somebody's done it successfully. Uh, somebody is an underwater basket weaver and figuring out how to make money on it. I haven't looked that up, but I bet you there's somebody out there, some nutcase doing something with that. Because every day I find people making money and I can't believe they're making money doing weird things and strange things, not just selling cars and selling houses and building software. They're doing all kinds of crazy things. So how do you find out who's doing that? So we want to do, so we want to find a role model, right? We're looking for our role model. Who has captured the path? So let me get my screen here in front of me so I can see everything. So let me, let me just kind of give you one guy who gave a role model. If you've looked at the book, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That's a story of a guy that's uh, gone through some things in his life, really rough background in terms of uh, abuse, uh, in terms of a lot of things, poverty, poor education, all the crazy things that we think of. But uh, in it, he talks about seeing the Navy SEALs. He's kind of just come to this point in his life. He's washed out of the Air Force, uh, kind of. He kind of was in the Air Force, but washed out of what he wanted to do in the Air Force, couldn't hack it, couldn't hack the training. Um, and this video of the Navy SEALs, and he's watching these guys struggle in their training, and he becomes where he's very interested in their training. He becomes interested, he says, in their pain. He wants to experience the pain with kind of a sick thought, right? But he's watching this and realizing that that's the dream that he has. Now, I don't necessarily, if you read the book, it's not necessarily to be a SEAL, but it's to go through the training to be a SEAL that seemed to be what his passion was and to go through the hell week and to go through all the, you know, the, the months of training that you takes to go to, to, through that. So he found a path. He found a path. He found somebody who is passionate about doing that. So who is living your dream? There's three things that you always want to do is, is think about what do you love to do? Is think about uh, who, who's making money doing that, or, you know, or how can you make money doing that? And who is living that dream? You, you take out the first two because they're important because until you narrow down what you want to do, it's the whole world. There's a billion things out there. Again, this guy could have decided to go into the Navy SEALs or he could have decided to go into some other branch of the military or just go into uh, underwater basket weaving, right? There's 
endless opportunities of what to do. So let's just focus again on that last question is how do you find that person who's doing the bizarre thing that you want to do? How do you get out there and do that? My number one tool is probably I already know them and so do you. For instance, if you are really in love with bicycles, right? You are really a mountain biker and you love and you hang around the mountain bike shops and you are buying the parts and you're talking to the salespeople and you're probably buying the vendor, you know who the vendors are, you know who the, all the, the, the cool gear who makes the expensive good stuff. You get the catalogs in your mail, you probably go on their website, you probably buy from them on Amazon. So the people that are in your space, if you decide, I love mountain biking and the equipment and, and I love the process of selling mountain bikes. You already know them. You're dealing with them. Or if you want to be a professional mountain biker, you're probably already following those experts. You're following them on their Facebook channels, on their Twitters or whatever other platform you, you might be showing up and meeting them live in person. You know who they are. No matter what it is that we're, if we're passionate about something, we tend to actually have a lot of built in expertise about that. We don't think we do because we think everybody else knows all the, the major bicycle part vendors. And we, we think everybody knows that because they're common to us. And that's what the big trick is the things that we are passionate about and finding the people who do it, they're, they're in a unique group of people. And we're in that group already. Usually, usually you are. You already probably know who these people are. So that's the first thing is use your own kind of common sense and use your sense of uh, the people you're already buying goods and services from. A clue uh, of, to find out who is living your dream because we're watching these people. We're watching how they make a living and we probably perfect to find that person. But the other thing is if, it, if they're a little bit out of touch or maybe you're exploring that underwater basket weaving thing is just really a crazy idea in the back of my head and I just I haven't put my finger on it yet. Who's doing that? Well then at that point I start going to LinkedIn. It's kind of the, the source because I can put underwater basket weaving or I can put anything in the search bar in LinkedIn and using some creativity I can start finding people who are making money doing things uh, so if I'm in love with NASCAR I can go in there and find people who are making a living with NASCAR besides the drivers and all those kind of people uh, you know a friend of mine he was in love with Dallas Cowboys that was his passion and so he got on LinkedIn and realized there are people that are part of the Dallas Cowboys associations. Uh, it's a corporation that there are people out there doing things with the Dallas Cowboys that are making a living doing things with the Dallas Cowboys. And they're not the players and they're not the cheerleaders and they're not the coaches. They're the software programmers they're the promotional people. There's a whole organization behind it. And he found out he really could live his dream connecting his software experience and professional football and realized there was a path for him to do that. Somebody's already done that before and he found people. So LinkedIn is a great place to go just do some searches for that. I love it because I'm always finding bizarre things and people doing bizarre things on LinkedIn. Search any term, any activity on LinkedIn and you'll find some professional making a living in it. I haven't done underwater basket weaving. I think I'm going to have to do that just to check that out. So, uh, so again, the, the third thing, you know, so looking, using your own network, using your own logic, using the people you buy from, using the fact that you can use a tool like LinkedIn. Google's another great source, just hunting things down a little harder on Google. And then but finding things on television like David Goggins did, seeing a show on the Navy SEALs and how their training was, and he had a desire for the pain. You know, he wanted to be part of that pain of the training. Uh, again, a uh, sick mentality, but but it, it fit him. It fit where he was in his life and what he was after. So this is the this is always the path is just to keep looking at where, what you're doing. There's always a path. So I'll give you an example. So a, a good friend of mine, client of mine. Um, now on our board and things, Brian Rabin, 
Uh, and we, we, we did a podcast with him back, I think it was way early, it was in episode number 18, where uh, Brian and I got on a call together and we recorded a podcast. It's called Don't Die in Your Cube, because that's one thing that drove Brian. He said, I feel like if I'm not doing something different, I'm going to die in my cube. I just thought it was such a representative line for uh, how so many people in the free world feel about things, right? Feel like they're going to die in their cube. What's wrong with that? As he started exploring what was his path out, he, he was in love with things like project management. He was in love with things like travel. He was in love with things like, I love to teach, right? So there's several things and he was able to combine them and think about who is that project management person who does training and, and all this. And when I ask him that, who travels, does project man management training, he knew exactly. The name was the tip of his tongue. He knew the guy who wrote the books, who the guy who did all the videos, the guy who did all the courses that he went to. He knew exactly who he was. And so he knew exactly who was living his dream. Now, the weird thing in that, and the weird thing with a lot of the people that are living your dream, even the people that you touch, even the people that you're right next to, and you start finding people who are doing this, a lot of times you're scared to ask them how they got there. Brian was. Brian even told me over lunch that day. He said, I can't call that guy. The words I remember him using was, he's like Oprah. He's famous. You know, he's untouchable was the concept. But he got him on the phone. The guy was actually polite and helpful. And uh, he got, got to the path of understanding how do you do this? Because the person, the reason you want to talk to the person who's living your dream, they know how they got started, right? They know how they got started. They know where you are now. They knew they were once there. So finding that person is just so key. Now, how do you connect to that person? Um, is, is I like to just boldly reach out because it just is the easiest way is just to boldly reach out. Email is actually a great tool to reach out to somebody and connect with them. In Brian's case, he made the phone call. Uh, he managed to find the number, make the phone call. Sometimes that's easier. That's harder these days, but uh, phone calls, text, email is, is a pretty low risk way to reach out. Uh, I've told a lot of people, I've met people on Amazon. I have read Amazon reviews about something else and one of the reviewers down there uh, had written something and talked about his business as it related to this product and and I was like I gotta talk to this guy his name is Henry and I so I googled Henry's name found his website sent him an email and said hey man I saw your review on Amazon I gotta talk to you that's awesome uh, because you're in a similar business thing that I am, and I would really love to reach out to you because, you know, you're living my dream. I didn't say those words, but that's what I was thinking. You're already doing things. You're way ahead in this particular activity from where I am. I have only had a 15-minute phone call with that guy and made a lot of money from that 15-minute phone call because he walked me through some common sense things in that very short period of time we chatted that day. So connecting boldly reach out is the is the uh, the way I tend to go is just because I think it's just easier. If you have to use smoke signals, whatever works for you, right? But you need to make the connection because a lot of us have fear and intimidation about making connections with other people. So I'll give you a case in point. So I'm I'm sitting there in a CIO's office uh, the other day. So he's chief information officer of this multi-billion dollar organization. And we're having a chat. And he tells me, he says, you know, Dale, nobody ever says, how do I be you? He says, people come in my office and ask me for, you know, they want to purchase things. They want to get a promotion. They want to, um, you know, people are selling me things. He says, but nobody in my, he says, I got a team of 400 and something people on my team. Nobody comes in and asks, how do I be CIO one day? And he said, and I need somebody to ask that. He said, I need somebody to want my office. I need somebody to replace me because when I move to the next level, 
I need somebody to want to step up and be CIO. I thought that was kind of weird. I want a replacement, right? Uh, it reminded me of the uh, thing that you find in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. In the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he makes the same statement. It says that everybody asks him for money. Everybody asks him for a job. But nobody comes and asks him, how do I be rich like you? That's what finding the person who's living your dream is about, is finding that person who can tell you how to be like them. It's the easiest thing to do. And here's why. If you come ask, no, let me flip this. If I come ask you for a job, whatever you do, I ask you, I want to work for you. It's a, it's a tense conversation, right? We're already, a tent, uh, uh, there's already tension because I'm asking you for money. So when I'm asking you for a job, I'm asking you for money. What about when I come and ask your advice about how you get up, how you got to where you are? It's a very non-threatening conversation because I'm asking you, Del Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people, is his basic principle was if you want people to like you, get them to talk about their favorite subject, which is them, right? Your favorite subject is looking you back in the mirror, right? That's true of all of us. So when I ask somebody, how did you get to where you are? I'm asking them to talk about themselves. I'm asking them to talk about their story. I'm actually complimenting them because I admire where they have gotten to, right? That's not threatening at all. That's complimenting this person. These people write books. Think about it. Uh, any famous president, you know, any famous, uh, you know, singer, actor, anybody who's famous for anything these days, you'll find a book about their biography or their autobiography, or you may actually find it on their website where they're telling their story. They love to tell their story, which is really good because maybe that story's already been told and you already can find that out. But going and approaching the person who's already living your dream and asking them for help, that's the awesome thing to do. So here's kind of how I go about that. I'll just tell you my three questions I ask. Um, and we do this in the room. We call this a reverse interview. This, by the way, is the exact same way we start companies. Companies always started this way. I can, I can rattle off you numerous companies that were started this way and probably a lot more than I know about. Jobs have been created this way. I've gotten job offers this way. Uh, is you find that person, you go out and you reach out to them and you ask them a couple of simple questions. Number one, tell me your story. Tell me your story. How did you get to where you are? Now, this is after you've sat down, if you're having coffee with them, right? You know, sit down and have the niceties about the weather and how you got there in the traffic and say, hey, thanks for meeting me. Hey, just tell me, how did you get to where you are? Now, if that sounds so stupid and trivial that I'm telling you this, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't mean to be talking down but I had another CIO from a company one day who's an executive call me one day doing this exercise. And he said, Dale, I don't know what to do when I find this person who's living my dream. What do I say to him? And he really meant it. Give me a script. And that's where the script came from. It's just go talk to him and say, tell me your story or how did you get to where you are? Whatever, what you want to do is open the floodgates and let them start talking about how they got to where they are. And they will tell you a lot for most people. The second question is just asking them, what do they love and they hate? Because there's always things they love and they hate about the job. What do you love and you hate about this job? And the third question, which is the million dollar question, is what keeps you awake at night? What keeps you awake at night? Uh, because again, what we're looking for here, I, can, I won't get into why those questions are so powerful and why they open up so many doors today, but I will just tell you they do it because my theories and the reasons why don't matter. Go try it. Find somebody doing something that you admire. 
find somebody that doing something that you would like to learn from and maybe you want to be like them one day. You don't know until you ask, right? Maybe you don't. Find somebody and just go ask them those three questions. How did you get to where you are? Tell me your story. What do you love and you hate about it? And what keeps you awake at night? You're not asking those in quite A, B, and C, quite the way I did. You're going to have a little conversation and let them talk about the first, and then you lead into the second, and you lead into the third, and boy, you'll have a sense of discovery. If you keep doing this over and over, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell people all the time, and nobody has ever challenged me on this, so I'm going to challenge you on it. Do that 10 times. Go talk to 10 people that you admire and see if you don't get a job offer. You'll probably get more than one job offer now. Um, see if you get a job offer or maybe an opportunity for a company or things that you just hadn't expected. They're out there. Um, there's reasons that people want to connect with that. I won't bore you with the facts of why that works again today. So, but if you're lost, I'm going to offer this. This is um, something um, we've been looking at doing and we've really, I've kind of started committing to spending time with you, spending time with people, talking through some of these issues. It actually helps me to hear people talk about it. So here's what I'm going to do. If you're lost, you need help, you got, you kind of need this clarity, I'm going to put a link uh, in the podcast uh, or on the show notes at dellcallahan.com. This is 164. And uh, dellcallahan.com 164, we'll put a link to get on my calendar. We'll have a conversation probably 30 minutes or so, and we'll try to see if we can help you walk through just how to make some decisions about where that happens. Will it all happen in 30 minutes? I have no idea, but at least we can get you moving. So until next week, go find out who's living your dream, and we'll talk to you next week.